Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time we entered King Mudo's temple and got the hammer. <laughs> this item cannot be overstated how powerful it is. Look at it just dangling from my fairy. Forget I said that. Link also doing leg lunges to pose awesomely along with it as he directs this, uh, he conducts the orchestra of death that will rain down upon my enemies. I'm getting a little bit of a power trip here. Uh, yeah, we have the hammer. This time, now that we have that in hand, nobody stands in our way. Oh, oh you actually got through. Wow, uh, a first for your species. You should be very proud. The path will open when the mighty attacks change the color of the tiles. Strike it exactly in the middle so it hits all the tiles around it and open the way. So it kills practically any enemy in one hit. It can be charged to be even more powerful than that as if you would ever need it. It solves multiple types of puzzles. It makes you fly. And it gives Ciela more use on top of just giving hints and having her spirit powers. This is such a clever creative item. It is, I'll admit, the most bog standard way that you could design an item around the touchscreen where you just get a free attack anywhere on the screen. And maybe that is a little overpowered. Maybe it's broken, but you know what? It's pretty nice. Uh, these puzzles have a bit of a quirk to them. You can hit on the sides here and uh, you can flip over the tiles next to them. You do not actually have to pound the tiles themselves because it releases shockwaves. I remember thinking these tile flipping puzzles were extremely difficult because I thought you had to hit the tiles and I got stuck on these for, I was probably in this dungeon for well over an hour just doing those alone. I thought it was really hard and I couldn't figure out how, they were how you were expected to do these things. And then I realized by accident that you could hit the space around it, and well, here we are. Now I'm teaching you these things, passing on the knowledge that I wish I had when I was your age. And I don't mean physical age, I mean age as a Phantom Hourglass player, for I am the older Phantom Hourglass player. Sound like one of those 14-year-olds who wants to prove that they're mature by just being like, oh, like my, my hobbies are more mature than your hobbies, even though nobody over the age of 14 has ever cared about that. Uh, what? No, 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 no. Pound the middle one, pound over there, and get all of them flipped over into O's. You're playing the most extreme game of solitaire tic-tac-toe. Boing, there are no treasure chests on this floor. I don't think any of these gossip stones have had any treasure chests to tell us about so far. We've just been that diligent as we should be by this point in our travels. We are well-seasoned veterans of this world. And now, open the path create the true form here. This is on a risen up platform. Curses, my item wielded by a flying person cannot go up about three feet. We wanna record this as we can't do anything with it now. Okay. Any bombs? Now what do I care? I don't, I don't care about bombs anymore. I don't care about anything anymore. I just want my hammer. Boing boing. Oh, three treasure chests on this floor. <laughs> right after I just was saying that you're not useful anymore. You really love, I really love jinxing things. It's what I do. Uh, can't go in that door, but we can fly. <laughs> Man, flying by a hammer and not in a painful way whatsoever. How brilliant is that? Um, okay. So we'll hit this. And it's not gonna do anything. I suppose some other items still have their uses if they must. Hit it that time. And we raise the water level once again. Pretty clever idea. I don't really get the idea of crossing over the water on spinal columns or what the theming is with that, but to each their own. I guess if the king really likes spinal columns, nobody would be able to challenge him on that. How unfortunate for his most loyal subjects who would give their life for him. Um. Was it again? I think it's this. Yes. Pretty clever. And now, I'll lower that again. And we moving on, yo. Through this door, we end up back in the kind of an area that we've been to before. You know what, no. I'm not gonna just utterly destroy, oh, they're actually more aggressive with their attacks. I'm gonna show, you can take off their head with the grappling hook and then just remotely defeat the body. It's a clever way of taking them out, not that you would ever do that over the other far more effective methods because you have bombs, but I thought I'd show it just because it's a little bit amusing. Uh, we'll push this. 
Get out of here, Rock. You don't even have feet. You can't stand on that platform. Discrimination solves the puzzle! We move that and we're able to open the way. And this is, I think, treasure chest number two already. There's the small key. And I got feet. Or at least cute little nubs. I can stand on this platform. And then we hop over this way. This is the only corner we've yet to explore. And what do you know? It's where we slot in the small key. Close up of my ass for some reason that you don't see on every door. That was a lot closer than usual is more what I mean. Uh, no. We pump that. We hit you. Work alongside it. Get it through this platform pointing out that it doesn't have any feet. Sprung up after it. And then, here we go. Now, with this dungeon kind of having its concept shown and us being really close to the end, heck right now, I'm about to get the boss key. <laughs> um, I have something I want to talk to you about. The opening cutscene, because it's pretty clear by this point that Tetra really doesn't get to be in this game hardly at all. And I want to ask, why did it have to be that way? Tetra is a great character, and the opening cutscene nailed her personality. Heck, it nailed the personality of all of the pirate crew. And just, they barely get to be in the game at all when that opening cutscene sets the stage for them all going on a great big adventure together. Also, the hammer picks up items too. Why does any other item exist? <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I think that that's actually one of the biggest pieces of missed potential is just why is there no appearance from Tetra or anybody else in this game? Because they set you up thinking that they're all going to be important characters and they catch you up on what they've been doing all this time and they're hilarious together. The opening cutscene is hands down one of the best things about Phantom Hourglass. And yet, we're really close to the end. We're about to go after the king who will tell us where the last pure metal is and Tetra just got to spend the whole game as a statue and who knows where the other pirate crew even is. Not to be a downer, it was just one of my personal experiences that upon seeing that opening cutscene again, after having just finished the game, I realized, oh yeah, that never happened. Step into the blue light to return to the temple's entrance, spin through the song and dance before... Well, the dance. I just turned it into a song right now. I'm sorry for lying to you. I don't even need a sword anymore. Eos, ancient stone soldier. Oh! Don't know why I'm suddenly French. I have been praising the boss fights up and down, all around this entire way, and we're doing this dungeon. This dungeon for the last pure metal, ending with this guy. This is bar none, one of the best boss fights there is. You launch up, you get his body on the touch screen, and you pound in the pegs on his body. You can walk between the legs if need be in order to get closer to his weak points. And you just gotta disintegrate the body down to its wooden frame. How wood is holding up stone? I don't know, but Selwall does miraculous things for the defense stats. We're gonna destroy the arm next, or at least the upper arm. Is it forearm? I don't know the terms. Unfortunately, I'm not a physiologist. Or know anything that is stated outside of video games. I'm sorry, it's a curse. Uh, we're gonna pound on that. We got him pretty well stripped down. My, how scandalous of you. You call yourself a king with that crown in your head. You do not know common decency. Whoop! Slip between the legs! And now the back of the head is the only thing left. I'm coming for you. Fear me f Excuse me. Fear me, fools, for I- Get it out one of these times. Roll, roll, roll. This is so cool. I love the dynamic hammer too. Such a creative boss fight. Fear me, fool, for I am the hammer. The hammer strikes back. Hammer two, hammer harder. Whoops, going in. Going over. Going up. Second floor, cranium. And now he's been reduced to very little. We got some buttons on his body, and you know me, I love pressing people's buttons. We hit all four of them, and he decapitates. But it's not over yet. We now have the head to deal with. We're gonna, oh, 
Not today. I'm gonna try to get up on top of the head while dodging the arrows that he's shooting out of his teeth. Or the arrows really are his teeth when you get down to it. Uh, gonna go up. And now we're up on him. Pow, 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 pow. He shakes you off after enough hits, because who wouldn't? And I certainly wouldn't like somebody beating my brain in with a hammer. Uh, make him go a little bit away so that we can hop on him again. And hit him again, hit him again. Mess him up. I genuinely want to know. Did you think these fights were going to be this dynamic and creative? Because they did it really well. Heck, with this last one with it being a hammer-based boss fight, you could say they nailed it. Yeah, you saw that one coming now, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I cannot sing enough praise about the boss fights that this one has. It has its problems. Boss fights ain't one of them. I don't know what they did, who they hired, but... Excellent fights, and this last one did not disappoint. You got more sand for the Phantom Hourglass. Two minutes have been added. It's to the point where I wish the rooms that were proper 3D and not just top-down like this one were a lot more common. I think it could have benefited a lot from it. Heart container. Only one left to get. Down we go. Ah, so you are the one who restored silence to our temple. I was the one doing a lot of shouting upstairs. I don't know who you have me confused with. <laughs> My name is Muto. I am the king of the great Cobble Kingdom. Only the true hero would have with him the three spirits of the Ocean King. Not to mention the ability to defeat that foul beast. I know what you seek. So you say the Ocean King is in dire trouble. I can't help in my current state, but your presence gives me great confidence. I will give you our sacred treasure, the Aquanine. Please, take it with you. I will now return to my blissful slumber. We are all counting on you to help the Ocean King. Sure is great that when we found the guy who would tell us the location of it, it happened to be right behind him. You got the Aquanine. It's one metal that you need to make the sacred sword. Only a sword forged of the three pure metals has the power to defeat Bellum. You did it! You got the pure metal from this island, Link! Come on, let's hurry back to Lineback! Oh, I can't wait to get the pat on my head like the good little boy that he knows that I am. Alright, that's the Isle of Ruins down, and we should have a nice easy straight shot back to the boat. Fear me, fools! Boy, who would have known that you could solve all of life's problems by just bonking them all with a hammer? It's so universally helpful. <laughs> What's that? You got it. You got the pure metal link. Well, what are we still doing here then? Let's go. Okay. Alrighty then. Let's then get on board. We're setting sail. What a surprise. Beetle and Jolene still together. It's like that couple that you're just waiting to break up, but they never do, and you blame one of them for all of your life's problems, and then you find out that she wasn't so perfect either after enough time goes by. It's a lesson that we all realized. Um, for me, it was a girl who thought she, it was a girl that I really liked, and I thought that her boyfriend was the source of all my problems in high school, and I hated him, hated him, hated him, and I celebrated the day they broke up, and then I found out that she was the one who dumped him because she thought she could convert him to her religion, and uh, that didn't really go over so well, and I honestly felt more sorry for him than I did happy for her being single. It was a way that it's the only time in my life that a crush ever dissolved all of my interest in them in one second flat. Uh, brighter note, utility handrail, 420 rupees. <laughs> okay, what about this one? 
A spike, a spike handrail. I don't need that one definitely, but what about the utility one? I just checked and I have every single handrail that is not the golden handrail after all this. Well, that went a lot faster than I expected, so I'm figuring I'll use my newfound knowledge of how to write W's. And I'll go check on a few things, including the Ho Ho Tribe, before we wrap things up. Pearl necklace. It's always the pearl necklace. Why is it always the pearl necklace? Okay, well, I have a better idea for what we could do instead, then, if they're not really going to be paying up any treasures that we've yet to turn in. Over to Murkay Isle. And as Sama pointed out, you can pronounce K as key, so the pun is that it's Murky Isle, even though it's pronounced Murkay, you know, it's a kind of a sailor joke, you know? I thought that was pretty clever, and it's not something that I ever pieced together on my own, so thank you. I'm gonna go to the treasure teller, and I'll turn in that regal ring that I'll see at least a little bit of profit on. Yar har keckle dee dee, I'm a teller of the treasures, bobbles, booties, I can sort the types, you are the pirate. <laughs> I lo had it and I lost it. How typical for me singing. I don't think I will trade in the regal ring, actually. I've always sustained that my stance on treasures is sell them as you need to. Just as you need the money, sell uh, only the stuff that you absolutely need to. So I think I'll get rid of Goron Amber. Such a trifle. And from there, I think two Zora Scales. These are 800 if memory serves, yes. I wanted to do all that. Because I thought a great note to end on is something that I've been putting off for a while, but has been building up since the start of our travels together. I've bought all of the upgrades to the quiver, the bomb bag, and the bomb chew bag, and after buying all those, it's replaced with a heart container for 2,000 rupees. No points from Beetle, of course, but it's time. That is all 16 heart containers! You mean it's not 20? All ours, maximum health, and quadruple defense to boot. That's like almost 50 heart containers. How embarrassing. I actually just did the math in my head. That's 64 heart containers. <laughs> uh, would you believe me that I was an honors math? Probably not. Well, that is all of the pure metals. All of the heart containers. And, well, we didn't get it in this episode, but a hammer! A hammer, man! I'm so happy to have this thing. <laughs> uh, why did they ever give me a hammer? Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we go hunting for some various items around the world and take the pure metals to Zao's the blacksmith to forge the phantom sword at last. See you guys then.